Last part of session 66, let's talk about pyramids and harvest, two old topics. Let's begin. So, this session's recap has been basically healing all the way up to now when we barely changed topics into archetypical mind and that was just uh, a tempting uh, approach to speak about this interesting topic that took a whole book, book four, which is going to be, I mean, it didn't take the whole book, but most of the conversations were going through that uh, that study. And so book four is concern or um, it's perceived as the Tarot, study of the Tarot and the archetypical mind. So we'll get to that. But here we're gonna take, this is where I feel that Don was sort of running out of prepared questions and he just went freestyle, which is awesome because we get some regular conversation of specific topics. In this case, we're going to talk about pyramids again. And I believe this is the last time we talk about pyramids specifically. So some of you may be, may be happy, others may be sad. There is no such thing as happiness or sadness. <laughs> um, but you're going to experience it anyway. So I don't have anything to say because we're gonna start just with a question that is directly on pyramids. So let's go to that and begin this last part of the session. That was pretty rough. Okay, so question 22, Don says, you mentioned that an energizing spiral is emitted from the top of any pyramid and that you could benefit by placing this under the head for a period of 30 minutes or less. Can you tell me how this third spiral is helpful and what help it gives the entity who is receiving it? Ra says, there are substances which you may ingest which cause the physical vehicle to experience distortions towards an increase of energy. These substances are crude, working rather roughly upon the body complex, increasing the flow of adrenaline. The vibration offered by the energizing spiral of the pyramid is such that each cell, both in space-time and in time-space, is charged as if hooked to your electricity. The keenness of, of mind, the physical and sexual energy of body, and the attunement of will, of spirit, are all touched by this energizing influence. It may be used in any of these ways. It is possible to overcharge a battery, and this is the cause of our cautioning any who use such pyramidal energies to remove the pyramid after a charge has been received. And this opens um, a good space for me to answer some of the questions I get in terms of um, the pyramid use for energizing yourself. And again, this is based in my experience and also in my knowledge and understanding of these energies. So please take it with a grain of salt and experiment yourself. Um, the only caution that I would say is the same one that Ross said. Use it for no longer than 20 to 30 minutes. It's a good refresher because they didn't say it here. But if you browse through the material, you will see that they recommend it no more than 30 minutes. I would say 20 minutes is safe. Um, overcharging a battery. I mean, I think I've I've done that, and honestly, I I didn't feel anything. But still, it's uh it's something to be cautious about. It's not like you're going to, you know, collapse with epilepsy or something. <laughs> um, not in my experience, at least. I don't think so. So, um, first, there are substances that we use. Caffeine, for example, is the main. Uh, drug that we use and it has this um, this effect in the body it's a it's a crude substance for sure and this is why um, you would hear you see it's funny how people say 
oh, if I'm going to become spiritual, I need to leave coffee or um, um, abandon coffee or whatever. And, you know, I also don't need to eat meat because that's very spiritual and all of these things. The truth is that you you stop taking things because you kind of transcend them. Your body doesn't need them anymore. Uh, and people confuse this with, oh, I need to do this, or I'm not doing that, I'm not at that level. Um, sure, if you want to say it that way, of course, uh, that's your way of perceiving it. But the truth is that uh, none of these things are doing any harm to you. They're not. I mean, certain things, of course, in our diet are doing lots of harm, <laughs> uh, depending on how we want to perceive it, because some people just want to go through their lives eating and drinking certain things, and that's fine. You know, there's people who inject themselves with testosterone and they drink alcohol and, you know, they drink a lot of Red Bull and they eat all kinds of fast food and so on. Um, this is true. Some people actually live that way. Who is to judge, oh, this person is not spiritual? It's God doing all of that. So what do you mean it's not spiritual? <laughs> uh, so it really is a matter of perspective is what I'm saying. And there is no perspective that is beyond God. So why even call it spiritual? Now, to be more scientific, I can say that, yes, this is the thing. As you start tuning yourself into a more calm mind, you see, this is not something that you can achieve in, a, in an hour yoga meditation or something like that, uh, or a polytropic session of breathing. You see, there is a, there is a, I'm going to call it the actual state of your mind. The actual state of your mind depends on your perception of life. Life meaning your day-to-day -day life. What does it mean to be alive to you? So your state of mind is going to be dependent on that. And that state of mind quickly activate into its normal state after the yoga session, after the holotropic session. I mean, you can probably say you know, calm, or even psychedelic sessions. You can take drugs. Uh, some people don't like to call them drugs, but let's just call them drugs. Uh, plant medicine, any psychedelic, really. Plant medicine included. Uh, but yeah, you take these and, you know, you change your mind. You do breathing exercises and your mind gets there. But then you return to your normal inertia, your karma. This is what karma actually means. You're living your karma. Of course, you're you're generating it in your mind so as this this is something that i can say by experience as your mind reduces its activity to the neurosis that we were um indoctrinated in in believing then what happens is that you start perceiving that your body responds differently to certain stimuli being food drink uh, activities people you engage with so these things start to sort of pulsate and you don't need them anymore. Not because you became spiritual, but because your state of mind is just different. I mean, this happens all the time. You change your environment, you change where you live, you wear, whatever you go, your state of mind always changes. You move to another country, so you adapt to that. This is exactly the same phenomenon that's happening. Um, but yeah, in any case, the reason why I'm saying all of this is not just rant, but because there is a point that I want to make, and I'm sure you will appreciate it in terms of the energy that you get with the pyramid, okay? So, um, as your state of mind is, uh, is reduced, and you know, you drink coffee again, which I have done, and you feel the difference, and you feel that uh, yeah, this is not me. Or smoke uh, weed, marijuana, which I used to. And you try it again, and you just feel something different. And you say, yeah, you know, it's it's that feeling again. But, I, you know, it's, it's not my normal state. It's not my actual state. 
uh, psychedelics included, you know, anything, the more you calm your mind into being in the present moment, the less you need anything, you see? Uh, you know, all kinds of things come out of this. Now, is the purpose gay to become completely still of mind? No, it isn't. It's just one thing you may, you may try if you want to, but uh, this life is not about that. This life is about loving. You know, ah, well, it is inherently in the stillness of the mind to love everything because you don't have any stress, <laughs> so it's like a natural state of love, sure. Um, but I don't want it to sound like most people make it sound. Oh, you see, you're failing, you're failing, you're a spiritual seeker, haha, uh -huh. you should be here, you're not. No, that's nonsense. You are where you have to be, and you should enjoy that. Please enjoy it. Enjoy your neurosis. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I enjoy mine. And so, the reason why I'm saying all of this is because the energy perceived in um, in the transfer, or it's not even a transfer, the charge that you get from the pyramid is within this state of mind in which you can perceive this energy, this flow of energy. So, um, can I get somebody and put a pyramid under them and uh, anybody on the street that doesn't care about any of this and is very stressed and they're going to feel something? Maybe. Uh, but my uh, experience and my understanding is that if you're not in tune with this sort of frequency of mind, even that frequency of the brain, perhaps you won't, um, and perhaps you will, who knows. But I believe the way Ra explains it here, you see, what do they say? The vibration offered by the energizing spiral of the pyramid is such that each cell, both in space-time and in time-space, is charged as if hooked to your electricity. So they're referring to every physical cell, even in time-space, which, as we know, there are energy vortices that are parallel to every part of our being. The whole universe is just energy, modulated. Even space, as we perceive it in third density, as uh, somebody I admire a lot, Nassim Haramein, which you, sh you should know who, um, um, who he is, uh, great physicist, has been talking about that space is energy. It's just so configured and patternized that things can move without being impeded by it. This energy is so well organized, that space. And this is where we get um, the old technology, very old technology of zero point energy, which requires nothing, the vacuum, what we call the vacuum is possible there. So, okay. The keenness of mind, the physical and sexual energy of body, and the attunement of will of spirit are all touched by this energizing influence. Yes. So no matter who it is, it's going to receive this. But it depends on the person's mind to perceive that energy. Again, I believe stress um, is not that it doesn't allow the energy to flow through you, but it makes it very difficult for you to perceive its energizing power. So... Again, there are states of mind and there are states of mind. It may be used in any of these ways. And yes, please don't do it more than 20 minutes. I would say 20 minutes. Try it. Test it. People are very sensitive. Others are not sensitive. So you just have to try and see what happens. Let's move to question 23. Is there a best material or optimal size for the small pyramid to go beneath the head? Ra says, given that the proportions are such as to develop the spirals of in the Giza pyramid, the most appropriate size for use beneath the head is an overall height small enough to make placing it under the cushion of the head a comfortable thing. Then Don says, there's no best material. Ra says, there are better materials which are in your system of barter quite dear. They are not that much better than substances which we have mentioned before, 
the only incorrect substances would be the baser metals. So, um, first, small enough, you know, given the proportions. I don't have my little pyramid here. Uh, it's actually back there. My little new altar. Uh, but that, uh, the pyramid should be small enough so they can, you know, you don't want to, I don't know, human sized pyramid because how are you going to lay? I mean, maybe you have a big house, who knows? But uh, yeah, you want something small. It's the shape that creates the energy and not the size. So, haha, size doesn't matter here. And the next thing was that there are better materials, but there is not really, um, you know, um, you see, if you make it with sticks, with uh, wood, plastic, right, would be cheaper than making it with silver or gold. And they produce the same thing. That's what they're saying. There are better materials which are, in our system of butter, you know, money, quite dear. Um, they are not much better than substances which we have mentioned before. So maybe, you know, because of the structure of the uh, the element, I don't know how, but yeah, there are better. But they're not better than the ones they have mentioned before, like plastic, you know, that would be very cheap to make. And as long as the proportions are right, the pyramid is working. It's the shape that matters. So the only incorrect substances would be base or metal, so no tin. Please use your tin for your hats and not for pyramids, is what Ra is saying. So we move. Question 25. Now you mentioned the problems with the action in the king's chamber of the Giza pyramids. I am assuming if we use the same geometrical configuration that is used at the pyramid at Giza, this would be perfectly all right for the pyramid placed beneath the head since we wouldn't be using the king's chamber radiations, but only the third spiral from the top. And I'm also asking, would it be better to use a 60 degree apex angle than the larger apex angle? Would it provide a better energy source? Ra says, for energy through the apex angle, the Giza pyramid offers an excellent model. Simply be sure the pyramid is so small that there is no entity small enough to crawl inside it. So, yeah, I suppose, uh, yeah, I, I'm always at a loss, you know, in terms of angles and apex and the structure of the possible pyramids that could be created. I've never been interested in that, uh, but what does Ross say about the 60 degree for energy? Well, they just recommend the proportions of the Giza pyramid. So follow that. I can't give you those numbers. And please do not allow insects to go inside the pyramid or little entities, depending on the size of it. You know, chicken, uh, a little uh, gecko, gecko, little lizard. Small things, don't let them go inside, please. Or something will happen to them. Maybe it'll be like the gremlins, who know. Anyhow, question 26, Don says, I assume that this energy then, this spiraling light energy, is somehow absorbed by the energy field of the body. Is this somehow connected to the indigo energy center? Am I correct in this case or this guess? Ra says, this is incorrect. The properties of this energy are such as to move within the field of the physical complex and irradiate each cell of the space-time body and, as this is done, irradiate also the time-space equivalent which is closely aligned with the space-time yellow ray body. This is not a function of, your, of the etheric body or of free will. This is a radiation much like your sun's rays. Thus, it should be used with care. So, physical real energy is going through this, mostly metaphysic, as I understand it. Otherwise, we would measure it. Although I think we have measured with our devices some sort of faint energy, which I suppose is the, the way we can perceive it here in space-time. So, 
it does radiate both space time and time space uh, I would think based on what I understand that the energy works metaphysically that's the origin of it right the shape of it is created in a metaphysical environment and that produces a sort of magnetic uh, no in this case it's not magnetic I'll get to that produces a sort of radiation as Ra says metaphysically that obviously is affecting the vortices of your own configuration because you're not a body creating energy your energy creating a body right that's the constitution of your mind body spirit complex that's the constitution it's just vortices of energy that are always changing depending on your mind's configuration and that's what evolution is here for meaning that's let me phrase that properly that is why we're here to evolve metaphysically what evolves is the soul the body not so much the body adapts and that's what we call evolution physically which is also a sort of configuration in space-time to have an experience as a third density body even our body our physical body the confederation quo says and i love it because they say that um we you know the real us or even at the soul level but in any case they just say that we are using a second density animal who basically pre prepare itself for us to be here you see um i mean it's a poetic way to say that of course the creator made all of this the logos in our case created this ape-like body and so for it to for consciousness to inhabit it and to have an experience and to evolve now consciousness is not separate from the the ape or our ancestor consciousness created the body for itself for you see there is only the creator in the universe but there are different ways to see it and this is why i sort of love quo but at the same time i acknowledge that they need to use a lot of poetic language which is really the language that we we can use uh, this systematic and academic language is it's um it can be a trap for uh, for true knowledge for true understanding because we confuse meters and gallons for the actual substance and so we confuse words for the actual reality and so if the words are not right then oh no that's not real then <laughs> because the words are not right you know so it's it's kind of double-edged sword but i do love the language because it does allow for a even better poetry and yeah that's a, just one way of seeing it so again i think this energy works from the metaphysical side and then of course as it works and does its charge to the energy fields that are metaphysical of our true mind body spirit complex then that of course manifests here in our body so you see it's like a system that is working in time space and of course is modulating the space-time analog that is the body this physical body and our brain which is the the tool that we have to perceive reality from a human perspective so yeah I don't, i'm not sure this would be interesting to investigate and see how the overcharging of of this um i mean they they do say that it's similar to the sun's rays so how similar how the does the sun affect us i mean it works upon our body directly we do need sun and this is the real craziness that is going on out there no no the sun is dangerous we we need to shield us, ourselves from it and we use all kinds of creams and lotions and yet we need the sun you see but overexposure to the sun of course it's going to cause some sort of damage to the body and probably some sort of mutation that it's undesirable but you need a little bit of sun right how else will you produce vitamin d take some vitamin d by the way recommend it anyhow let's go from vitamin d to 
question 27, where Don says, how many applications of third of 30 minutes or less during a diurnal period would be appropriate? Ross says, in most cases, no more than one. In a few cases, especially where the energy will be used for spiritual work, experimentation with two shorter periods might be possible, but any feeling of sudden weariness would be a sure sign that the entity had been over radiated. So uh, one daily, it's enough. In a few cases, whatever spiritual work may be, then you should experiment with two shorter possible uh, sessions of energizing yourself with the pyramid. Uh, but yeah, again, just experiment with yourself. And that's it. There's not much to it. Okay. Don says, can this energy help in any way as far as healing of physical distortions? Ra says, there is no application for direct healing using this energy. Although if used in conjunction with meditation, it may offer to a certain percentage of entities some aid in meditation. In most cases, it is most helpful in alleviating weariness and in the stimulation of physical or sexual activity. Now, this is the true Viagra. Uh, I don't know, for both men and women, I suppose. How does this work? Don't ask me. I'm not sure. But I can, I can only offer uh, an insight into how it can aid in meditation based on what I said before. Because if this energizing works in the metaphysical and it sort of gives that spin, if you will, to your vortices here in space-time to your physical body then you will feel energized you will feel that things are in the mind complex are harmonious let's say if you can tune into that and so if in your mind complex because this is how you perceive anything right your tool for perception the spirit uses the mind for it to manifest itself. And so it manifests itself as a body. That's why we have a mind-body-spirit complex. So through this, if this aid as the pyramid helps in energizing the vortices that makes us the chakras, or not only the seven energy centers, main chakras, but all other secondary, tertiary, and so on chakras that we have. So these energy centers sort of spin harmoniously is my guess and so your mind will feel this and i think they say that a certain percentage of entities may be aided in meditation of because of this is because they are more keenly aware of the subtle energies in their minds so it may aid in that case how is it helpful in alleviating weariness perhaps through the same uh mechanism that I explained and that I speculate, of course, how it works. It's not a given. But also in the stimulation of physical or sexual uh, activity. I don't know. I haven't done the experiment. I would let you know if I did. But I haven't. So, getting close to the last couple of questions. This is question 29. It's a long one. And I think this is where we get to harvest. So, yeah. Don says in question 29, in a transition from third to fourth density, we have two other possibilities other than the type that we are experiencing now. We have the possibility of a totally positively polarized harvest and the possibility of a totally negatively polarized harvest that, I understand, have occurred elsewhere in the universe many times. When there is a totally negatively polarized harvest, when a pole planet that is has negatively polarized and makes the transition from third to fourth density, does the planet have the experience of the distortion of the seas that this planet now experiences prior to that transition? Ra says, you are perceptive. The negative harvest is one of intense disharmony and the planet will express this. So this I think this is where if you, well, you don't even need to pay close attention. As you will see, 
I think this is what generated the interest in Don going into the line of questions in terms of harvest of negatively polarized planets. So let's reread this question because Don is going to focus on the disease part of it. And Ra is explaining a more general aspect of the graduation into fourth density and disease or how disease plays a not even a role but just an element into it and it's interesting of course i like it i don't think it's that insightful but let's see let's reread don's question again okay so we have uh two other possibilities aside from the one we are experiencing now just as a recap because we're going to talk about harvest there are three types of harvest there is a positive and negative like don said here and the one we are experiencing right now is the one that is mixed, the mixed harvest. Mixed harvest means that some people are going negative, the vast majority are going positive. And when I say the vast majority is the vast majority, that is the key element for a planet not to polarize negatively. So we know it here because you can test it, you go outside, Check on people. See if they're actually negative. You will be surprised what you what, what you will find. So uh, that's a good part for, for recap or for reminding what type of uh, situation we have here on, on the planets. And okay, what else does Don say? Totally negative, I understand. We have occurred elsewhere in the universe. When there is a totally negatively polarized harvest, when a whole planet is, goes negative, basically, and makes a transition, does the planet have the experience of the distortion of the seas that this planet now experiences prior to that transition? So prior to the transition, there is the seas. The distortion of the seas. Yeah, I can see why Don kept asking about this because Ra doesn't give a specific answer to it until the very end. So Ra says to this, yes, you are perceptive. The negative harvest is one of intense disharmony and the planet will express this. Of course, everybody is in be becoming, becoming one with the disharmony, if that makes sense. I'm going to give some good, um, a good thought on this in a little bit and it's the perception that we have on negatives it's um it's an interesting one so okay yes we have a an intense disharmony going on in the planet the negative planet so don says question 30 the planet has a certain set of conditions prior to transition into fourth density that is in late third density and then the conditions are different in early fourth density could you give me an example of negatively polarized planet and the conditions in late third density and early fourth density so that I can see how they change? Ra says the vibrations from third to fourth density change on a negatively polarized, I correct myself, on a negatively oriented planet precisely as they do upon a positively oriented planet. With fourth density negative comes many abilities and possibilities of which you are familiar. So. What are the conditions of a negatively polarized planet or oriented planets in the influx of four density energies? Um, this is the question that Don is asking, uh, actually. Can you give me an example of a negatively polarized planet and the conditions in late third density? So that transition, basically the same thing we're going through right now but on a negatively polarized planet. That's that's the key part. And Ra says that the vibrations are basically the same. Um, yeah, precisely, yeah, they're the same as they do upon a positively oriented planet. With four density negative comes many abilities and possibilities of which you are familiar, which are, you can't shield yourself anymore. You will see everybody for who they are, how negatively polarized they are, uh, what's their contribution to the society and so on. And so as four density becomes more clear, 
then everybody will be more clear to each other. <laughs> so that's one of the things. And of course, there is the, the thought transfer. There is communication by thought and everything else that we know in four density positive. It's, uh, it's also available for four density negative because aren't they the creator themselves too? So these are all the things that come into play in four density, no matter what the polarization. Ra finishes and says, the four density is more dense and it is far more difficult to hide the true vibrations of the mind-body-spirit complex. This enables four density negatives as well as positives the chance to form social memory complexes. It enables negatively oriented entities the opportunity for a different set of parameters with which to show their power over others and to be of service to the self. The conditions are the same as far as the vibrations are concerned. So you see, it's all about the mind once again, um, because in a negatively polarized planet, you have this, this direction towards aggrandizing the self to um, to become the master of all. You can't continue to manipulate those under you, but they will conform to you. Meaning in four density, as the social memory complex, and Ra has explained this in the past, saying that social memory complexes, negative ones, go through a lot of chaos and entropy in the first stages of forming this social memory complex. So in early four density, because there is the fighting for position. You know, who is going to, um, I think this is, even, <laughs> there is a, uh, a mock-up of this in our governments. Do you see all the treachery that goes behind uh, government? I mean, some of them are, are orchestrated already. And so we see the, the whole, uh, I'm not even talking about I'm not going to mention any countries, but you know which ones are very, very orchestrated because they are the uh, the host of the elite. So yeah, this is orchestrated, um, and it's not really a, a, a true fight. There, there's no more fighting there, and that's why it's even been boring to watch the elections <laughs> uh, to a certain degree. Even though I bought it in 2020, I will confess, I bought it. I was in there. I was watching it. Um, but yeah, you you watch him from this perspective now as boring. You know, it's just, it's not even that. But in some places, and I'm not even going to talk about uh, country elections, but the general, the general play in the world right now, you can see that there's a lot of treachery, always. You know, we, we were big buddies with, um, with Osama bin Laden, right? Big buddies. Then, oh, no, you don't serve us anymore. And, you know, you're out of the equation. And so this is the kind of uh, uh, situation that is happening in four density, but negative to a degree in which everybody is saying, you know what? You win the game. You go up there. I'll do what you say. And so this is the pecking order that is established in the negative social memory complex and so the, the idea is for this to have a cohesion so they can go because they can manipulate each other anymore to polarize themselves. They need to go and negatively polarize third density entities because who else are they going to enslave if not third density uh, naive entities by default? Now, if you parallel this to positive entities, they do the same thing in terms of they don't no longer polarize themselves because they have achieved a certain polarization. Yes, there is some catalyst uh, to work with and that works rapidly in the first stages of four density positive. So they become fully polarized. There is no veil. There is no veil in negative or positive. So in the positive, what they do is that they go out and help others. They serve others in illumination, in the radiation of love, 
as in service, in direct service with others. So that is the work in Fort Density. The work is, um, is to go and help others. So the negatives, what they do is they serve others by teaching them the ways of service to self. That's what they do. So they're not even here trying to dominate those who are positive. No, 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 no. They're here to dominate the negatives that are their lackeys who buy into their negative philosophy so they can continue manipulating us. So it's like a, it's like a cascade. Um, I, I really don't buy anymore. I used to because I didn't know any better um, that there are Dracos and all these things. I know some of you might say, but Gabe, how can you say that? We have so much evidence. I just don't buy it anymore because my perception of, I mean, I'm not saying they don't exist. Maybe they do. It just seems a fantasy story to me. I know some people may be disappointed, but so be it. I think it's a fantasy story that we tell ourselves and that it might even created by the elites to create this, this fear because who else talks about Dracos and all of these if not with some sense of fear. There's always that and I won't mention names because I do have some respect for them and some appreciation for what they did through my spiritual awakening. But some people are still you know, engage in this uh, war of light against darkness. It's futile. I mean, you can stay there if you want. You can, that is the third density war and even fourth density naive, naive war. You know, the fourth density positive trying to tell the negatives, oh, we're all one. And the negative saying to the fourth positives, uh, come, let's manipulate others. And so both say, oh, I'm sorry can help each other. <laughs> so it's futile. Why do we even need to go to four density to have this war? Why not transcend this in our own psyche right here? Because your third density doesn't mean that you have to go to four density first. You can work your fifth and sixth density uh, understandings here. In any case, I think I'm going beyond the point. The thing is that uh, I don't believe, uh, I don't believe that. I think there is just it's just another way to continue to keep it. Same thing with the solar flash. God, solar flash is again another way to, yes, keep people under the impression that time's running out. You know, better do your homework. Uh, you're not being spiritual enough. Come, let me teach you. <laughs> let me teach you how you how to be uh, spiritual enough. There's a price to pay though. So. You know, good-hearted people still fall for this. So I, you know, I feel compassion for it. So yeah, this is how the negatives actually establish their order, uh, and there is intense disharmony in this process. That is the disharmony that is happening. Disharmony of that they need to become a social memory complex, but at the beginning, they're fighting with each other. So uh, no veil. They can see each other. And that's terrible for them because I want to be at the top. Everybody wants to be at the top. They're all, you know, me. It's all me. Not you, but okay. You know, we need to concede <laughs> the chair to somebody. So they do. Oops. Okay. Enough. That was the, that was the bell that signaled question 31. Now Don says, I was concerned about the amount of physical distortions, the seas, and that sort of thing in third density negative just before harvest and in the fourth density negative just after harvest or in transition. What are the conditions of the physical problems, the seas, etc., at late third density negative? Ra says, each planetary experience is unique. The problems, shall we say, of bellicose actions are more likely to be of present concern to lay third density negative entities than the Earth's reactions to negativity of the planetary mind. For it is often by such warlike attitudes on a global scale that the necessary negative polarization is achieved. As fourth density occurs, there is a new planet and a new physical vehicle system gradually expressing itself and the parameters of Bellico's actions become those of thought rather than manifested weapons. So, very deep. 
um, answer here. So, you see, Don is asking about, and he'll continue to ask about the disease. He wants to know about the conditions of physical disease because he's associating that the disharmony that is created in the planet provokes the disease. That is not truly the case, as you will see. Um, so that's, that's where he's trying to go. But Ra is explaining something different, or slightly different. When they say that the problems of war, bellicose actions means warlike action, uh, are more likely to be of pressing concern to late third density negative entities than the Earth's reactions to negativity of the planetary mind. So it's more important for the entities, you know, this this war, than the Earth's mind. You know, the Earth is just going through fourth density, whatever. Um, for it is often by such warlike attitudes on a global scale that the necessary negative polarization is achieved. So we need to go into a full warlike, you know, which is, does it sound familiar? Yes, because that's what they, you know, it's almost like, <laughs> you can see it this way on planet Earth. Ah, this is why I love the raw material so much. You see, imagine that somebody gave the script, you know, the negatives. Orion said, all right, buddies, here's your script. This is how you need to run the planet for it to go negative. They wanted this planet to go negative. That's their service. Their service to the universe as the creator is to create as many negative planets as possible. So they're doing what they're supposed to do. They gave the script. Now, planet Earth, for reasons that I don't understand, was very positive. And in this positive polarization, it just kept sending wanderers. You know, well, the Council of Saturn may have something to do here. Wink, wink. I guess because uh, Maldek, oh, that script went beautifully. Mars, yeah, it went perfectly too. <laughs> so, hey... Everybody had to leave their planet and come here on Earth. So I get, I guess the Council of Saturn said, like, uh, okay, not another one. <laughs> we have seen the experiment already, Mr. Sun, Señor Sol. Uh, we know how bellicose these ape-like creatures can be in the universe. For what it's worth. <laughs> That's what they said. And, okay, we're here on planet Earth. So, okay, this planet went on the positive... Tons of wonders, millions of them just came here and like, okay, no matter, I will, I'll come here and help. And, but the script was here. The script was uh, being read by those in power. And they said, well, the script says here that we need to uh, create some war. You know, um, after Hitler, they said, well, you know, just need to continue this war. You know, let's just go to uh, Vietnam. <laughs> Why not? Just make up an excuse. Let's do that, you know. Then, uh, yeah, well, the Korea, uh, Korean War was before Vietnam. But then, you know, uh, it's just, oh, the Cold War. That's still, right? That's global war. We're doing it right, right? Then, you know, the war came to the end. They were just like, ah, oh, stupid Russians. Why do they have to collapse this and ruin the fun for the negatives? All right, let's just go to Iraq. Saddam Hussein, that's the evil one. Evil evil man must be taken out. Ah, uh, well, that kind of, you know, went away. Then just like, oh, guys, we're, we're behind schedule. Let's continue with this war. 9-11, Afghanistan. What? Yes, Afghanistan. No, what about Iraq? Yeah, let's go to Iraq too. Okay, man, you know, that's been going on for a while. So, um... And people don't care, you know, people say, yep, you know, we're not just going to kill each other. Um, yes, of course, those in power that continue to, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry to say this, but it's true, brainwash other people to go and do their killing for them. And continue the script, you know, that, that happened. But the, the globe, it's not going to war with each other, especially now. <laughs> so, you know, there's... Um, there's always something, and the script is failing terribly. It's not happening here. Not on our watch, right? <laughs> 
So this is helpful for the negative entities that are polarizing still. The planet doesn't really care. As four density occurs, there is a new planet and a new physical vehicle system gradually expressing itself and the parameters of Bellico's actions become thus of those of thought rather than manifested weapons. So yeah, once you go through the four density, then fighting you know, with sticks and powder and atomic energy, if we want to play that game, it's no longer useful because now we develop psychic powers to fight with each other. And so that fighting, I guess, is taken by the pecking order in the formation of social memory complexes. So I suppose those who are stronger in their minds as negatives will thrive to the top. But then they'll find that there are fifth density negatives who are orchestrating all of this. And then they're like, oh my God, all right, I need to get there. <laughs> Uh, it's beautiful. I love this philosophy. It's just so beautiful. In any case, let me go on. Question 32. Don says, well then, is physical disease and illness as we know it on this planet rather widespread on a third density negative planet just before harvest into fourth density negative? Ra, I think, picks it up and says, physical complex distortions of which you speak are likely to be less found as a fourth density negative begins to be a probable choice for of harvest due to the extreme interest in the self which characterizes the harvestable third density negative entity. Much more care is taken of the physical body as well as much more discipline being offered to the self mentally. This is an orientation of great self-interest in self-discipline. There are still instances of the types of disease which are associated with the mind complex distortions of negative emotions, such as anger. However, in a harvestable entity, these emotional distortions are much more likely to be used as catalyst in an expressive and destructive sense as regards the object of anger. So I can see why Don was asking about the the disease right because if we have a lot of negative polarization then there is a lot of use of anger fear sadness and all of this um so there is resistance to it but you see disease is not caused by the emotion itself is by our own resistance to the emotion and our inability to process it let me put it this way when you receive an emotion, a strong emotion, what you are receiving really, or you're feeling, is the resistance to that emotion. You are either integrating it within yourself and saying, I am this, and this is simply uh, the energy that is going through me, and I appreciate it as the observer. In unity, you process it this way. This is the positive path. Um, and then there is the negative that controls it. So acceptance is the way of the positive. Acceptance of everything. Open heart. I am everything, including this emotion. The other one is controlling it for its own purposes. The negative one is controlling it for its own purposes. So I would add to this that, of course, anybody who is not decided on a negative planet, I would think they would develop a sort of disease. Sure, because you are resisting it. But as Ra says, um, physical complex distortions of which you speak are likely to be less found as for density negative begins to be a probable choice of harvest due to the extreme interest in the self, which characterizes the harvestable third density negative entity. So as the planet becomes clearly negative, then the, the disease is less and less possible because everybody is saying, ah, this is the game we're going to play. So everybody has a much more, as they say, more care of the physical body and discipline of the mind. Of course, you have to if you want to polarize negative. Once you know the rules of the game, you're going to play them. And um, I'm not saying you, but the negatives in there, they're going to take care of themselves. And, you know, um, this is why 
you can see that some people may be thriving on a very negative environment and you say this person doesn't get sick this person loves being this a-hole <laughs> um, and um, you know they're fine whereas other people just collapse and have depressions and anxiety because they're forced into their corporate ladder rung because they haven't they haven't decided that they're positives or negatives so yeah a lot of care is taken by by the entity it is a mistake um, to believe that negative entities are in and of themselves sickly they're not they're very healthy just like a positive one is very healthy as well the unhealthy portion is the lack of acceptance or control of your own emotions now remember control polarizes you negatively acceptance positively so you either accept everything or control everything anything in the middle is going to cause a sort of disease so let's move on where Don says in question 33 second to last question I'm trying to understand the way that disease and bodily distortions are generated with respect to polarities both positive and negative it seems that they are generated in some way to create the split or polarization that they have a function in creating the original polarization that occurs in third density is this correct and there is some clarification here Ross says this is not precisely correct distortions of the bodily or mental complex are those distortions found in beings which have need of experiences which aid in polarization these polarizations may be those of entities which have already chosen the path of polarization the path or polarization to be followed it is more likely for positively oriented individuals to be experiencing distortions within the physical complex due to the lack of consuming interest in the self and the emphasis on service to others so big pause here don is trying to understand how these distortions are generated disease um they are see don says that this this is the incorrect part when he says uh disease and bodily distortions are generated with respect to polarities both positive and negative it seems that they are generated in some way to create the split or polarization that's what in, it's incorrect that they have a function in creating the original polarization the phrasing is perhaps confusing but i see what don is asking here you see catalyst is what we get period Pat catalyst is neutral it is our mind that decides that the catalyst may be processed in one way or another positive or negative when we look at it and we say oh i don't know i can't decide uh seems good ah oh, it's bad oh my god i don't know what to do <laughs> and catalyst says all right i'll come back brother then it cycles again it comes back in with another disguise all right how about now <laughs> and the entity says like ah oh, i don't know i don't recognize this uh, never seen this before and catalyst says like oh my god all right i'll come back again this cycling generates some sort of disease because if it's not perceived by the mind it will pre be perceived by the body and the body will take it and say okay i'll just stay here <laughs> whenever you want to pay attention to me i'm just here so the catalyst is there to be processed positively or negatively and so this is the original intention intention that the catalyst has for polarization um, that is what don is saying but it's not like the disease is made for polarization it's just there as you can see for the choice to be made for polarization but it's not that the disease itself presents as a sort of uh polarizing uh catalyst is the catalyst that was um that resided there or manifested itself as a, a physical distortion so Ra says, uh, distortions of the bodily or mental complex are those distortions found in beings which have need of experiences which aid in polarization. See, they need those experiences. And yeah, sometimes it can manifest as a sort of disease. And as soon as you polarize, then it goes, uh, it goes away. 
But that's because the mind couldn't process it in the first place. You see, so catalyst is not the disease. Catalyst can manifest as the disease. These polarizations may be those of entities which have already chosen the path or polarization to be followed. Of course, you know, if you already picked your path and you're aware of what they mean, then yes, um, it will um, it will show like that as a path, right? You you know the path. You know how to accept or either control the situation. It is more likely for positively oriented individuals to be experiencing distortions within the physical complex because the positive people have no interest in the self and the overemphasis on service to others. So it's more likely to happen that the positive one doesn't care about their bodies. They're just martyr, open-hearted, directed towards service to others, and they neglect the body. What's wrong with taking care of your body? Don't mistake that taking care of your body is selfish. What is selfish is to control other people for your own gain, or the environment for that matter. That is selfish. It's not selfish to take care of your body. Please do not make that mistake. Now, Ra continues and says, Moreover, in an unpolarized entity, catalysts of the physical distortion nature will be generated at random. The hopeful result is, as you say, the original choice of polarity. Oftentimes, this choice is not made, but the catalyst continues to be generated. In the negatively oriented individual, the physical body is likely to be more carefully tended, and the mind disciplined against physical distortions. So... Uh, yes, the unpolarized entity. Um, I I I don't I don't think I like the word random there, but I can see what they're what they're trying to say. You see, the logos generates catalyst randomly. It is said, so I'm going to caricaturize it for you, and it looks like this: the logos is providing catalyst because the logos. Let me put it this way. The Logos is you. Okay, You're not so different than the Logos. Uh, only as far as your ego goes. Your ego will perceive a different personality than the Logos. But truly, life is giving you, this is what we say you know, poetically, that the universe is giving you the opportunities that you need. You either accept them or reject them. Or control them. Rejection is going to make you repeat the cycle. I mean... The cycle here in your life, day to day, week to week, month to month, year to year, depending. And so the universe is giving you all that you need. That at the beginning looks random because the Logos, as it lost itself in this illusion, wants to see what it does, you know, the general catalyst. Will, will I polarize toward the positive or to, towards the negative? And so in doing so, it can pick and say, oh, yeah, I want this, I want that. Instead of knowing it's a surprise, you want the surprise. You want to be able to get lost in the game and find the surprise. If you knew the whole game, then you wouldn't be wanting to play. Why would you want to play? So the Logos does this to itself. We are the Logos. So as it does this, it generates at random, see? So in an unpolarized entity, catalyst of the physical distortion nature will be generated at random. I would say that it would manifest, it would seem to manifest at random, but it is not because all catalyst is neutral and that randomness is just simply the lack of choosing. The mind is there to choose, to discern. The hopeful result is, as you say, that some choice of polarity will be made, of course. Oftentimes, this choice is not made, but the catalyst continues to be generated. Of course, you will continue. The Logos will continue to throw to itself catalyst. All right, what am I going to do with this? What am I going to do with this? <laughs> In the negatively oriented individual, the physical body is likely to be more carefully tensed, like I said. So I'll give you my last impression on the negatives after this. I haven't forgotten. Question 34, Don says, this planet to me seems to be what I would call a cesspool of distortions. Uh, yes, I love your language, Don. This includes all diseases and malfunctions of the physical body in general. It would seem to me that on the average, this planet would be very 
very high on the list if we just took the overall amount of these problems. Am I... Is my feeling correct in this assumption? Ra says, we will review previous material. Catalyst is offered to the entity. If it is not used by the mind complex, it will then filter through the body complex and manifest as some form of physical distortion. The more efficient the use of catalyst, the less physical distortion to be found. There are, in the case of those you call wanderers, not a congenital difficulty in dealing with the third density vibratory patterns, but also a recollection, however dim, that these distortions are not necessary or usual in the home vibration. So, big pause here. Uh, as I have said, uh, Raj just summarized this by saying we will cover previous material, which is, yes, catalyst is offered to the entity. First, perceived by the mind complex, then filtered through the body, manifests as some sort of physical distortion. If you don't get the lesson in your mind, you will get it in your body. Catalyst does not go unused. You will experience it. And in the end, your acceptance of everything is the key or control of it. The more efficient the use of catalyst and the less physical distortion, of course. Um, and then the wonders have not only a congenital difficulty in dealing with third density vibratory patterns because they're, you see, I have said and I have speculated that the gene, the genetical uh, material that we have is influenced greatly by our own vibration. If you have divorced yourself, like I have done, but still have some sort of, I don't know, like you still have a, an affair with uh, materialist signs, then you would see that how we believe genes work, it's not really a function of randomness. Oh, mutations happen and this person is just brilliant or has a physical complex that is just tremendous. You know, it's a, He's a god running or doing this and that. Or whatever it is that we have some biases towards appreciation or depreciation of people, which is the common thing. You know, people are disabled. <laughs> I did a whole podcast on uh, so-called disabled people, uh, the social inadequates. Go listen to that because I, I go deep into that. Down syndrome, autism, all of that. And yeah. Uh, I have my own view on all of this. So I believe, of course, in my speculation, that is this metaphysical energy that is beaming through us and causing us to be genetically predisposed to certain things. So this is what Ra is saying, that the wanderers, not only a congenital difficulty will have in dealing with their density vibratory patterns because their physical body, or rather metaphysical body, is that um, at an odds with this first uh, third density. And there's also a mental recollection that these distortions are not necessary or usual in the home vibration. So <laughs> this is so common in people when they say, ah, oh, when I was a kid, I just didn't conform with the things in this planet. And my parents said these things and my at school they said this and I just didn't want to be a part of all of that, but nobody understood me and so on. Um, these are signs of inadequacy of vibration. You don't conform with this nonsense, you know? So it's very likely to happen. So yeah, this is it's quite simple to understand. I don't need to go over it. Again, Ra finishes and says, we overgeneralize as always, for there are many cases of pre-incarnative decisions which result in physical or mental limitations and distortions. But we feel that you are addressing the question of widespread distortions towards misery of one form or another. Indeed, on some third density planetary spheres, catalyst has been used more efficiently. In the case of your planetary sphere, there is much inefficient use of catalyst and therefore much physical distortion. We have enough query. We have enough energy available for one query at this time. And that's the last query, which if you want, I will read to you. Where Don says, then I will ask if there's anything we can do to make the instrument more comfortable or improve the contacts. 
Ra says, I am Ra, continue as always in love. All is well, you are conscientious. I am Ra, I leave you in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. Go forth, rejoicing in the power and the peace of the one infinite creator. Adonai. That is the closing statement of Ra in this session. And my closing statement on this last paragraph is that uh, they remind us that the Wanderers uh, have, and many, not only the Wanderers, but there are many who choose pre-incarnative. Yeah, let me, let me erase the word Wanderer from this because it's not only Wanderers. A lot of people choose mental and physical limitations and distortions for their incarnation. Once again, this brings us to the acceptance. Accept what you have because this is what you planned on being and doing. Uh, but yeah, Ra was aware that Don was talking about widespread misery because of the lack of catalyst processing. And they do say that our sphere, clearly there's a lot of inefficient use of catalysts. And so a lot of physical distortion, disease. Not much to say there. So, conclusions, right away. Um, we explore the harvest, and I said that I would have something for you at the end, which is the negative ones. We explore harvest in the negative sense. You see, the negatives, we sometimes think that they are very distorted people. Oh, they're... they're they, they're probably suffering a lot. Truly negative people, and this is why I I put my feet, I stand on the fire by saying this quite um, confidently, that the people that we perceive out there that we say, oh, look, that's a negative one. I don't think they are as negatively as they want to be for them to polarize completely on the negative side. Because a negative one is so at peace with itself. Yes, you may think, what? What are you talking about? They're so distorted. But they're not. They're so deluded within their own perception of self-aggrandizement that they don't see any problems they have no emotions they're just perfect perfect beings and it's a beautiful way to perceive the creator that way isn't it so they don't have disease or just like positive ones they're so in harmony with their own disharmony because their disharmony is closing the heart completely and so it generates this heat that is so sure of, them, of themselves that that's why it's 95% negative uh, or 95% service to self negative polarization that is required for them to uh, ascend into four density negative so my point is that we have these perfect beings they are perfect they feel perfectly fine with themselves and we, like Don probably assume, thought that the negatives will have a lot of problems, that they would feel a lot of anger and uh, as a result, cancer and disease. But that's not the case. That's the case of the positive ones that haven't been able to process their own catalyst. And so just manifest as a disease. And, and when I say positive, because everybody in the ethical polarity of positive beingness is aware of unity. It's only the one that is deluded that believes that is uh, it's a separate self. And it potentiates that separate self to the degree that, yes, it finds a way. And that is a negative path. But the vast majority of people, let's just call it unpolarized, are positive. And so when they finally accept themselves, then... Everything flows perfectly. I mean, just think about the idea of accepting yourself. Whenever I tell people, when I'm working with them, 
and we're going to this process of you know exploring the self I say the most absurd thing that makes them crash in their emotions which is imagine if you could relieve all the conflict that you have in your mind and simply accept everything that you are how would you feel oh that cascades a lot of emotions in people and it's because you have been fighting with yourself all the time you have been fighting with nobody else but yourself because you can't accept who you are in that moment you see nirvana can be translated uh, as Adam Watts like to do it and I love it as blowing out as releasing as uh, I've been holding my breath all this while and I can finally release it that sensation of letting everything go letting go that's nirvana and you're letting go of all that pressure that you have been building on yourself all that pressure only you have been doing it to yourself so what gives acceptance but I come to the end of this video the end of session 66 uh, I think we have a long session as well in session 67 I don't know what we're going to talk about there it's always interesting stuff I appreciate you as usual for being part of the other side of the camera that makes this possible and I leave you in love and light as Ra says and rejoicing in power of the one creator which actually means rejoicing in yourself in your pure presence nothing else I love you my other self I'll see you in session 67